coming back, don't we? <laughs> All good. Right, so we got... Yeah, Hardline, yeah, man. Let's we had Hardline. Hard did you line. watch it, yeah? Yeah, I did watch it, yeah. Did you watch it? Yeah, watched it, yeah. Sick. Fantastic, enjoyed it. wasn't it? Oh, I did as well. And I really enjoyed the build-up as well. What an event. What an event. I think even better that everyone made it through to finals. Yeah. It was really, it was really cool, wasn't it? I, yeah, I, I honestly it's... didn't actually know about the quality I thought was just seeding for the finals order. I didn't realise that you could not not qualify. Oh, I was under the impression that there's only the top 14 went through to the You're main. probably right. You're probably right. But um... Yeah, I think I am. And also I want to say, not only was it obviously a really good decision to, to cancel quality because the wind looked pretty gnarly. Yeah. Uh, and having not really hit jumps that size very much in my life, I definitely wouldn't like to be a passenger of wind when you're hitting stuff like that. No. Have you had any major wind I'm, experiences? I truly hate wind. I've had massive offs because of wind, and it's just it just feels so pointless as well. And and like you don't fall in a way that makes any sense. It's not like you, you know, if you fall mm. on a jump because you're coming up too short or you're going too long, that that you're in a position where your momentum isn't in a weird direction. Whereas if your front starts yeah. going, you know, you're just like... Nothing you can do about no, it No, it's just shit. You're just like stuck. You just get stuck. I hate that stuff. So, yeah, yeah it's always a consideration when you see... Um, <clears throat> it's funny, actually, like riding with um, slope-style contest riders, they're so used to riding in the wind. Like riding with like yeah, Sam Reynolds, for instance. Yeah. He's so good in the wind. Because we have wind up the trails sometimes, and I'll just be like, I'm not even interested. I'm like, nah. And then he'll just start flipping stuff. So flips, for instance, work well in the wind because of the really, yeah, because of all your all your um, head or tail, all any kind of wind, basically a flip. If well, this is what what Sam says anyway. A, a flip yeah. will just stick you. On course, it's. I guess it's such a momentum-based move that you don't. For instance, if you just did a big dead sailor, there's no energy mm. in the bike. The bike's just weightless, so you can imagine right. if there's a side wind, you can imagine it taking you or doing something weird. Whereas in a flip, yeah. everything's so like there's so much energy in one particular direction that I don't know. That does make sense. Thought. Yeah, be, yeah, that does make sense. That's interesting. And do do you think he sort of like just flips it or does he counteract it by like hitting a jump and going to the right a little bit so the wind brings you back over or is it that's actually there's a bit of everything well no I do that I definitely whip into wind if uh, if there is wind and basically any kind of anything that you do I think helps a bit in wind so if it's a whip or if it's a flip or even if it's a spin it kind of makes Mm. you your concentration and weight isn't on the wind and stopping from moving around in the wind it's on that action kind yeah. of I don't know if it makes any yeah. sense there's like momentum in one direction basically is what yeah. I'm saying I think I don't yeah, even know sense. what I'm no, talking totally. about totally no it's interesting though man and, and I think obviously it was uh, yeah it was the um, best decision cancel it for the win what I what I really enjoyed about this year's hardline was Reese Wilson's commentating he oh he's awesome. brilliant he was really brilliant wasn't he how good was he like full on rider perspective Dude. obviously he's done it a few times Arguably one of the best downhill riders on the planet at the moment, and that is and the not way he broke an easy it all down. Was, that is not an no, easy not at job. all. And and he did, he I did thought excellent. that straight away. Like he didn't stumble, didn't miss a beat. Always had an answer for anything. Rob asked him, like absolutely nailed yeah. it. And I mean, he's alongside absolutely one of the biggest it. personalities, actually, I've ever even met, Warner. And it's yeah. not, it's not easy to not easy to follow a guy like that. And I thought he was. So, so I guess his um, role was like the analyst. So Warner's mm. the lead and he's the analyst, I guess. I think that's the, in commentary terms, what that would be, okay. which I think yeah. is the same. I think is the same as like him and Claudio, for instance. Like, okay, I could be wrong. Yeah. I can't remember. But yeah, R- Reese did amazing. It was well impressive. I, I really noticed that. And I saw a few, um, a few like uh, bits on social media saying it. And I was like, fuck yeah. Yeah, he killed it, didn't he? Yeah, it's so good yeah. getting that rider perspective. And he picked up on so many like, little things i think i can't remember what what rider it was but someone i think it might have been craig evans actually just nicked the wheel coming into that one of those um that funny little drop off which was like i think he described it as like dropping off a garage roof at some point towards the bottom of the track and re-spotted he just snagged his front wheel and it nearly got him over the bars like all these little things he was just picking up on were 
super interesting. So yeah, I absolutely nailed it. And he, I think he made that event better than what even it usually is, I think, because you just get in that perspective of it. And also, I don't know, it just made it seem a bit more legit, a bit more calculated maybe yeah. as well, I think. You know, I think a lot of people maybe watch that and think it's just a case of, you know, getting to the bottom, but he sort of really broke it down that you could see what riders were doing and how they were doing it and stuff. So Well, interesting, yeah, isn't massive. it? Because that track really yep. separates people because there's like, you know, it's it's a task just to get down it. So then in order to race down it, you can see when someone's like aggressive on a bike and there's like a, <clears throat> you know, it, it's pretty obvious which people are like racing down it and which people are like mm. fucking getting down it. And, it, and both yeah. are impressive, which is totally. so sick, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a few things that I obviously really ne- well that like I noticed that I really liked. I think the the mix of athletes was brilliant. You know, you had some slope style guys in there, some free ride guys, yeah. racers. I think it's a really like good mix of people. I know COVID probably threw a spanner in the works with a lot of people being there, but I think the riders that did do it like made it. You know. Yeah, definitely. I loved watching the build up, especially with Jono. Jono's such a great personality, and just watching him like. Yeah. You really feel you. You really feel, um, you know, for all of his triumphs. Every time he hits the new feature, he, uh, I'm for always sure. so stoked for him. It's wicked. He just yeah. puts that across really well. I think for some reason, Jono. Obviously, he's a smart guy, and he, but he's just very yeah. honest. I think that's what it is. There's no like um, bravado. He's just like, yeah, I'm really scared of this, or, <laughs> or, and then when he lands something and he's pleased, he's like, outwardly yeah. pleased. There's no like being cool, which I think is uh- sick. And I think what's really cool as well is obviously knowing Jono a little bit better now and yeah. people hopefully listen to the podcast will know as well. You know, he's got a nine to five job. This yeah. guy isn't all out racing bikes all the time. So I think, I know there's a few guys there actually that have, you know, also got nine to five jobs, but to just come away from working in a week and just go and do yeah. something like that. And no doubt it's Monday today and he's probably back at work, like in a yeah, shoot, mad, suit and tie talking about talking yeah, to bank nuts. people. It's, I thought it's just... Yeah, mind blowing. There's a few standouts for me. I thought Gaytan did. Gaytan was on a uh, a really fast run. He was one of the guys that I thought was really visually yeah. bombing, and he had an unlucky yeah. crash. And then I thought Josh Lowe was very impressive. He was very impressive. yeah. I thought thought he was he was very good. Just I, I think I think I went in and out of the live stream a tiny bit annoyingly because I had bad signal. I was actually okay. I was actually at my grandparents. I ended up sitting out outside on the road in the rain watching this under a hedge <laughs> but, committed dude yeah committed. I know I was, I was excited committed. and it didn't let let down really I mean I'm so no. I'm, it's so weird uh, literally in within five miles or something of my house I have two of the competitors you know and then a lot of the others are my my friends so yeah. I, I, I always feel like you've got a horse in the race watching I don't know I, I, I love watching these sure. uh, I'm a big fan of the sport anyway and then to have like all of these horses in the race is sick. Do you get more <clears throat> pumped for hardline than you would a regular downhill race? Mm, do you know it's the riding? I find almost it, it, it's it's funny, dude, because I don't actually like the big features. I don't necessarily that weirdly for me, the big features are almost the bits that I would do. And then right. the rest of it, the racing lines, the technical aspects, they're kind of the bits yeah. that I actually find more impressive. So Hardline for me is, is is just a really, really well covered race. And obviously the drops are big and you can see their big compressions, like that new drop. I love that yeah, new drop because heavy landing and then you can just see you're just in free fall after it. And that's what yeah. these dudes like. And that left do best. corner, just like the most funniest thing ever. Yeah, just controlling <laughs> chaos and then rah- Oh, so yeah. sick! So I I do really enjoy Hardline. There's something like there's something really cool about watching it, but I wouldn't say I'd ne- necessarily enjoy it more. I do love a good old okay. fashioned World Cup. Like I mean, Hardline's brilliant actually because, like we just said, it's it's such a feat just to get down the track and that whole build mm. up. I think I feel like um, Red Bull do a really good job of covering like the build up now, or certainly just actually just in general people do yeah. a good job of covering the build-up now because it never used to be a thing did it you'd see the live show and that'd be it whereas now yeah exactly half of Rampage people is want the more up. they want more investment into it though they want to know about the characters don't they yeah. and i think stuff like long-form podcasting has probably helped that as well mm. 
that you know a little bit more about these athletes, where they come from, what the background is, why they're there even. You know, you got people like, I think it was Josh Lowe that got called up late or maybe it was that Cho Simpson? I can't, can't remember. remember. But again, Lu- uh, Lewis Buchanan on an enduro bike. Like you want to know about that stuff. You want to understand like he's literally been called up last minute. He's got a drop a post on. <laughs> like, yeah. It's, it's pretty insane, really. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's almost... Um... A necessity now isn't it you can't just have that event like it used to be uh I, I mean to be honest it used to actually just be an event full stop mm. and then you might get a video further down the line yeah. with coverage of it whereas now it's the other way around it's like yeah you know, it's, you're right especially with like the vlogs as well i think they really help yeah you know and i guess this goes back a little bit towards the um the fest series debate that I yeah. guess we sort of sparked, well, didn't spark, but we sort of took part, took part in that. You want to know that, you know, at, at the evenings, I'm like, right, when's Bren's video out? When's Bernard's yeah. video out? Lewis has put something out. Like you want to know more of what's been Definitely. going on through the day, through practice and stuff. And you, you're that much more invested when it comes to the live show that you're like, no, nah, like, I know, like I know these people now I'm, I'm into it and I want to know what happens. A great example like, for me would be drive to survive because I didn't really, I really only mm. vaguely followed formula one before mm. I watched drive to survive. And then as soon as, cause all it was is a helmet bombing around a track and that, even that didn't look that quick. It's not like that impressive. You know, it's impressive, but it's not like a, yeah, it's only until I know those people and I know who's inside the helmet and they're lining up. That's when I found. That's when I actually enjoyed watching it. And and, yeah. and now I watch whole races. I'm completely stuck in. So right. Ultimately, I think that's yeah, only going to benefit the sport though. In general, mm. I think you know knowing more about these people. You know, for sure. There's obviously certain athletes which are a lot better than it than others. Yeah. But it's the human. Just aspect, you know. Yeah. How, it is, yeah, but just just having that little bit more knowledge about people and stuff is just, um, yeah, it definitely makes it more fun. And I think Moto's done a great job of it as well. Look how many of the uh, the Moto guys have got a vlog. You know, you've got Christian Craig's one's amazing, and um, yeah, all of I mean, all of those guys do a really. Dean Wilson's one's hilarious. Like you really get his personality coming yeah. across really good. Like you, you know, you get a feel for this kid and like what he's like, and you you root him for him. Like you, then you, you really root, root because, don't you more than you would yeah, before for just invested. for the helmet and that action figure. You know yeah. the person, yeah, that's it, isn't it? Totally. What uh, what feature on Hardline scares you the most? I was thinking about this as I was watching it. Weirdly, like, it's that fucking waterfall before the last section that just looks death. I can't, oh, and the rock section into the road gap, horrible. That yeah. rock section to the road gap, you just know. In, to, in order to make all of those guys look like that down it, you know, everyone mm. just looks like they're cautiously going down it. They're not cautious dudes, none of them. They bomb yeah. down shit, that's what they do. And then to, <laughs> you know, it doesn't it doesn't do it justice to how horrible it must actually be in real life. It's like... Yeah. For me, those last... Just the last two jumps. I don't know it, why, yeah. but like, bone a log that's probably okay i guess but then like the last jump where you're tired you've like a lot of them were cranking at yeah. it and it's like <clears throat> that and it was a big pull as well to get over it wasn't it, it? it's yeah. like a big like long and low i think it was like 60 foot or something like it's a fucking big jump to yeah. end on after all that yeah. <laughs> after you've made it all the way down that track then you've still got to jump those things yeah. it's like see hairy. that's it uh, those for me are pos- they're like a positive thing so you're searching for more speed I think that in, in the big features mm. that I'm more scared of, it's well interesting because like every single person is completely different to what they find creepy or scary or whatever. Uh, I, yeah. I think I'd find that after the metal ramp off that drop, <clears throat> I think I'd find that scary because I'd just imagine myself blasting to... If it, well, Dude, if you make... If you like have, monitoring the speed for that, you mean? Yeah, that's so shit. Doing that on anything, yeah. I hate. I hate that about any of the riding out in Utah and stuff where you're just like breaking, second guessing yourself and then popping and then being like, oh, well, you know, even even though I've only gone one foot longer, that equates to four foot further down a landing and then way more Gs and I could just imagine myself dying off that. Just, <laughs> just going yeah, sick. Yeah, that did look super gnarly. That. Yeah. Where, where did it go before? It must have just turned right and gone back down the bank somewhere. Yeah, it, went, it? it actually remember. went left around that drop. Because they oh, okay. yeah, I watched someone's coverage had them going down the old line when it was too windy. Okay, and then out onto the landing, yeah. Okay, 
Yeah, it was good. I'll tell you what as well, the coverage was awesome. You know, mm. we talked about Reese covering it really, really well with the commentary, but the the drone stuff is fucking brilliant, if you ask me. I think it's amazing. Yeah. You know, it's a little bit annoying, I'll be honest, when you're like, vv, 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 yeah. you just hear like that. But they did it with the first World Cup as well, where you could really see down that last, that down the straight, I think, wherever that first one was, um, with all the jumps on, and they followed the riders down there. And I thought, the way that the covering races now is like really elevated. Isn't it? It's, it's really impressive. Really cool. Yeah, you get a really good like first eye view of how big the jumps are, you know, not just from one yeah. camera angle because the drone's moving around. I think it's bloody awesome to be honest. It's so cool that they've managed to pull that off. It is. It's just, yeah, it's so it's so so fucking it's so like important now, isn't it? It's so yeah. it's almost it is almost the point of the it's got me thinking about as well, like how how Rampage is covered, because I'm pretty sure that's always just from stagnant camera angles. So now if they're going to start getting drones involved, I can't remember if they did it before, but well, they got helis really... there. True, yeah, of course they got helis. Helis there, and yeah. long lenses, which really add right, it make it terrifying as well. Mm. You know, when you're there, yeah. and that's like you've got to be a, quite a crazy person, I think, to have someone call your name like, okay, you drop in now, and then film you from a helicopter you've got to be fairly stoked on the situation <laughs> got to be I, confident in your own abilities <laughs> dude that is not for me that 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 would that is the worst case scenario that really is. I, I think fucking that's awful even if it was like right he's gonna pick his lunch from the meal deal section in M&S Ollie Wilkins <laughs> follow me as I walk across the fucking street into the co-op <laughs> into the M&S <laughs> Going down the sandwich line, <laughs> all different camera angles. Fucking what the fuck? Jeez. I'd fuck it up. I don't know how I'd fuck it up. I would. I'd walk out with like, I don't know, a pack of tampons and a step ladder. <laughs> <laughs> Dickhead. Uh, so if you got the call, would you do it? No. Ultimately, that's... really, yeah. Would you say no? What to work where? Hardline. No, it's not my shit. I'd... Really. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to do that. It's all fucking pressure. It's too much. I'd if mm. if I could go there and happily make my way down the course gently without anyone around, without the wrong people around, I'd love to. I get eyes oh, just fucking weird. I am. I couldn't do that. I find that really impressive that those boys can do that. Yeah. No, you're right. Like you say, a lot of pressure. Yeah. A I'll tell lot you what, I was really impressed with and um, Matt Hockenall. Yeah, what so, a beast. Oh, there's so many of those characters, isn't there? Like There are so many of those characters, see, but that yeah. one, I'll be honest, that one came and I was messaging Jack, who's um, Matt's business partner at Merge Decals. So yeah. I was like, dude, like, what? Like, I knew Matt was really good on the bike, obviously. He's a Hockenall. Like, they're, they're a naturally gifted family. They're good at everything. I was like, how the fuck did this happen? And he was what like, well, beast. I don't know. He just asked, I think. He's up for like, it. Or, or Warner asked him or something. So sick. And there he is. That's like, fuck. It's like, it feels like he's come out of nowhere. Yeah, there he is at Hardline. Like what? <laughs> Nuts, isn't it? So yeah, super impressed with Hawkers with that. Like again, I, I mean, yeah, naturally talented rider, amazing on a bike. Same as Sam, his brother Dave, whatever we call him. Do you know what? Um, we had a pretty good year as well in terms of um, incidents. I think I've, I've yeah. had a few few crashes, a few injuries, but nothing too wild, mm, wasn't it? Nothing too crazy. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's true. Dog, do you mind if I go for a piss? I'm no, go for it. Dying here. I'm shaking. Mate, enjoy. <laughs> enjoy.